Hi, everybody. Welcome on the Lights on Data show. Today, we're going to talk about data management. We're going to see what it is, why it's important, why really we should care about it, some of the best practices that we should follow, and further advice and recommendations if you want to get into the field or progress your career. So welcome, Anjali. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the show, and thanks for the introduction. My pleasure. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into data management and your expertise within data management? Sure. Yeah. My name is Anjali. I am in IT and with the data for around 20 years now. I started my journey in data as a data consultant doing the hands-on job or consulting in the data realm doing data cleansing, data migrations, data integrations, foster data management, and all that is in between the data. So I started in that space and then I worked across different sectors, starting from oil and gas, healthcare. And then in my current role or the latest one that I have, I am the director for the data platform for a financial institution. Here, my work involves managing data engineering, visualization, data governance, and the management of unstructured data. This data experience has given me exposure into every aspect of data management, the one that I'm going to talk to you all about. And Julia, that's quite comprehensive portfolio that you have of quite a lot of areas that you're touching upon. So let's talk about data management in particular. What is data management? It includes various functions and programs to ensure that the data is relevant, it's accurate and accessible for the whole organization. Some of the functions that are critical for data management are data based management, the DBMS, the data modeling, data integration, data governance, master data management, just to name a few. So let me explain this data management using a simple day-to-day -day analogy for it. So when we, for example, go to shop for our house, we get a lot of groceries and stuff for the whole house. It is not that we just go once for the opportunities, once for the cleaning util util you know, utilities or anything. We bring in everything. We bring in food, veggies, milk, eggs, soap, clothes, everything. So when we bring them home, we just don't store them in a big heap in our storage area. We don't do that. So what we do is based on their usability, based on their relevance, we store them where they're supposed to be. For example, the kitchen items, bathroom items, cleaning items, etc. So this first basic function of separation and assigning each individual part to it is called as the database management. Depending on usability and relevance of the data for a particular application or a function, it is stored in its own database. So that is the database management. Now, once the items are separated, then we start to categorize them using their, again, day-to-day -day usability. For example, the lentils and the drinks, et cetera, go in big jars. The cereals, they usually go in easy to grab boxes. The cleaning material goes in the bathroom in a cubby that's out of reach for children. So based on the requirements, different things are divided into different things. And then you can go grab your cleaning material in your kitchen, keep it back where it needs to be kept. So by doing this, what we're doing here is this is data modeling. So we are dividing every single attribute of an entity and we are arranging it in a way that we can cross-reference it and use it when we need it. Planning and editing or working for the annual budgets for yourself, decide what you need, what you don't need, how you're doing with your finances, right? So here, this is data integration. You bring in everything together, look at it holistically and plan your next grocery visit, for example, or your annual budgeting. So this is again, as I said, data integration. At the organizations, you bring in all the data, look at it, integrate it, and look at it for your insights. Finally, data governance, the tough one, right? Here, what we do is if we don't organize well our shelves and if we can't see them properly, what happens when we start doing our spring cleaning at the end, we realize that, oh my God, it was here. Something was, something comes out and you're like, oh God, this was here. And I wasted my money, my energy, my effort to bring a new one or to build a whole new thing. So this is data governance. If you had governed the data, if you had done the distributions well and managed the labelings, you would have got it when you needed it. 
So similarly for organizations, if the data is managed well, governed well, it will help you get the data at the right time. So this is a very high level explanation of what the different functionalities of data management look like with a day-to-day -day example. I hope it, it helps you guys to get some clarity on what data management is. Oh, amazing. I love the analogy. It is high level, but so comprehensive. So thank you so much for shedding some light on what data management is. Do you have any best practices that you recommend for people or organizations to follow in terms of data management? Yeah, I have a couple based on my experience in data. What I think is data management is a, is not a choice anymore for the companies. It is a, it's a very much a necessity. Right. The data management, however, is not implementing an application and managing it or maintaining it with, say, upgrading for the next five years. It's a process that evolves with the organization's growth. When roles and the priorities change, the data management also evolves and changes. So one of the key practices is to always revisit and revise your data management strategy so that it remains relevant and can actually contribute for the organization's growth. So that is one of the, uh, one of the best practices. Another one that I would say is the people, the kind of people that you bring in for the data management or for at the senior levels for the data management, starting with the developers also, is to bring people with the right passion and also with the right attitude. It's important. What I mean is it might sound philosophical, but it is important that people who are working in the data space have the higher standards and values and ethics. The reason I say is the person who can access data, can work with data, has the master key, I would say, right? Ins and outs of the organization. And there is a saying that if you talk to data, it will tell you what you want to hear. So you need to be really ethical about how you're using data, especially at the senior level. So this is another best practice to bring in the right kind of people. And as I said, continuous evolution of the data architecture is critical to remain relevant and to use the latest technologies that are coming in the data space, right? Starting from analytics, visualization to AIML, because things are changing on a day-to-day basis, they're progressing. But at the same time, I think it is important for every organization to know what is important for their organization, what are your priorities, because you cannot, just because AI is going to something very cool, you don't have to do it. It's what you need, build, bringing it together with what are the technologies available that will make it optimal for your business. So these are some of the tips I would say when it comes to data management. Seems like difficult, seems like it doesn't give you value, but uh, if you do it the right way, you can start seeing the results very quickly. Definitely. Thank you so much for these tips and recommendations. In regards to revisiting the data management strategy, how often would you recommend for companies to come back and revisit it? The way it would help is, of course, you have to do an annual review of your data strategy and correct the course if need be, depending on where you are, if the company prioritizations have changed, if there is a disruptive development that has happened. So depending on where the, both the macro and the micro factors for the organization, you have to revisit every year, I would say, and correct the course and make sure that you still remain relevant with the organization's growth. Thank you. Now, I've met a lot of people throughout my career that work in data management and surprisingly, not all of them really had a direct path that led them into data management. They all had very interesting sort of experiences that led them to land within data management. It's a recommendation that you would have for people that want to get into data management, a direct path that they can take, some sort of an education that they should take or work experience that they need to get within the data management field? Great question, I would say, because what I think is with the given world we are in with respect to education, the entry barriers have drastically reduced. Initially, it was like if you have a degree in engineering or if you have something, if you have or learned programming professionally, you can get in. But today's world, anybody and everybody can be in this space and they, everybody is in one way or the other. But if you're specifically interested in 
getting a profession out of the data space, it's very much possible. My recommendation would be to start small. There are, if possible, get some professional education courses done. They can be done online. They can be done through institutions as well. One of the great helping I recommend is the projects. If you get hands-on projects that give you that kind of exposure and visibility into what the actual real world problems are and how to handle them using data, that'll be a key asset. And another recommendation is in your own realm, there is data available. If you're working, there is data available. So get your hands dirty. Start maybe from starting with Excel. You know, Excel also has a strong tools that you can start with that for data analytics. So start there and then you start looking at the data and the data will start telling you a story and you follow it and you, you will be astonished to see how your world looks like with the data. Lens on you. I think getting that exposure, getting that understanding of the data and the business problems is key, along with your professional courses. Like, for example, if you want to study Python, SQL, some of the key tools that you want to do for data analytics, along with some data visualization tools like RBI like that. So there are tools that different options that you have if you want to have a career in this field. And it does, as I mentioned, there is no entry barrier I see now. Thank you so much. To add to that, I would re also recommend people to check out the DEMA, the Data Management Association. They often have a local chapter in the big cities throughout the world, but there's also an international chapter that sort of covers things a little bit more broadly. And they're a very welcoming community. They often have presentations from industry leaders, and it's a great networking opportunity to really find more about the space and challenges, best practices and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Any parting words? First thing, I really want to thank you. This is an amazing show, I feel, where you're bringing in people from the actual data space and giving an opportunity for everyone to talk about their experiences, and which are very real. So I, I am thankful for getting that opportunity. And the second thing is, as I mentioned, this space is growing. It is, will continue to grow because of the new ways and because there is a lot of data to churn through and find my insights. So there will never be a dearth of work in this space. So I think I really want to welcome everyone who is not in this space, but is interested to join and start their journey here at any time. So I wish everyone all the best and thank you again, George, for letting me have this conversation and happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you so much for being here today and sharing your expertise on data management. And I'm really grateful for your time and again, sharing your experience.